So I'm sitting at my desk about 2007, and the phone rings. As I answer the phone, I realize it's the CEO of a small financial services company, uh, a man I'd spoken with about a week prior when he phoned to tell me that he was thinking about investing in some work with his leadership team. At that time, he had told me a little bit about what was going on with his team and really positioned it as just, you know, we're just trying to get off to a good start. So at the time when I was with Knightsbridge, I sent him the material on Knightsbridge's team inoculation program, which we lovingly referred to as the flu shot for teams because it helped get new teams uh, off to a start that would kind of immunize them against some of the things that often go wrong. So here he was phoning me back a week later, and I thought maybe he's phoning to ask, when can you start? Or more likely, what does it cost? But that wasn't his question at all. He said, I only have one question. Thanks for sending the information about the flu shot. Do you have a rabies shot? <laughs> and I laughed a little bit more uncomfortably than you just laughed, <laughs> because I knew that this is what I was going into. And when I went to meet his team, it was even worse than I thought. Now, they weren't foaming at the mouth, so that was a relief, but they weren't doing a lot of other things. They weren't making money. Three years in a row, their revenue had actually gone down. And they weren't engaging their people because they had once been on the top employers list and had slid off the top employers list. My favorite indication of that, when they shared with me the survey results, the question was, to what extent do you have the leadership you need, does your organization have the leadership you need to be successful? And I thought, I checked my eyes, I thought I was reading wrong when I read that uh, in some total in the entire organization, the number of people that agreed or strongly agreed that they had the leadership they needed was zero. Which of course included the 10 people that I was sitting in front of who were in fact the leaders of the organization. Even they didn't think they were the leadership the organization needed to be successful. So that's what I do. I spend the vast majority of my time working with leadership teams that are either trying to take their game to the next level, the high performance executive team, or with teams that have become toxic and really need to reboot their leadership team. Probably people in your own organization have done is try and fix the very serious issues of trust, uh, of passive aggressive behavior, of gossip, of um, conflict, all of these sorts of things, and they've tried to fix it with zip lining, or cooking classes, or I want an honest answer here, how many people have done the latest and greatest in team building who's gone ax throwing? <laughs> okay guys, you can't do this. Really, ax throwing? Okay, so you took people who don't like each other, don't trust each other, are struggling with some conflict issues, and you put axes in their hands. Yes? Later we'll talk about how that went. So I want to share with you an alternative, which is, uh, interestingly, not something that people are talking about often enough uh, in the marketplace, which is how do we actually inspire people through our own behavior to grow up, to get along, and to get stuff done? Because the only path to fixing a dysfunctional team, although you can have lots of fun with a good team, axe throwing, zip lining, cooking, winery touring, but the only way to actually help a team that's become dysfunctional is to convince one of those people that it's time for a change and to give them the skills to actually change things for the better and to inspire those around them to do the same. So one of the most important things we have to teach, and it's a skill, we have to teach people how to catch those negative reactions, how to become aware of not only what they say, but, but how they hold themselves and how they react, and teach them curiosity, teach them to use questions, teach them in that situation to trigger a, a virtuous cycle as opposed to a negative one. So that's a lot of my work, is teaching people how to overcome that mother-in-law effect problem. Okay, one more. If there is one massive problem facing our teams, our organizations, and I would argue a significant 
amount of the Canadian productivity gap owes itself to our complete inability to have conflict effectively. As Canadians, we suck at conflict. How many people were raised by somebody who said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all? More than axe throwing, that's good. Okay, so if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Did it really mean this? Was it like in my house? If you can't say anything nice, wait until we're in the car. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, I know. So what did we learn? We have programmed an entire nation of 35 million people to be passive aggressive. Really, are we surprised that we have passive aggressive issues? That is the number one problem on Canadian teams? Are we surprised that our companies make decisions more slowly? That we get you know, beat out by faster competitors all the time? That we, we get slaughtered in the global markets by organizations that actually can make a call, make a bold move? No, because we get exactly what we deserve because we're so damn passive aggressive. So, it's because we're nice, right? We're trying to be nice. We think that's nice. We have an entirely wrong definition of nice. If you want it after, leave me your card and I will send you. I wrote an article for Harvard Business Review called Conflict Strategies for Nice People. It's really useful. So let me give you one other story. How many people have posters in their office somewhere? Um, you know those successories posters? And it's the one, it's got the rowers? Right? And it says teamwork in big letters under it. That, that, that one, do you know that one? Okay, I actually send a free copy of my book and a prize to anyone who sends me a picture of themselves taking that poster down. <laughs> swear to God, I do. A book and a prize to anybody who takes that poster down. Why? Because it is sending the exact wrong message about conflict. Because when we're on a team, we're all pulling in the same direction. We're all in the same boat. So we think that if we ever feel in tension with someone, we're not being a good team player. It's rubbish. It's all wrong. And it's starting to become a big problem. So I wrecked my brain for ages trying to come up with a new story. And this story is totally lame and ridiculous. And you know what? It works. So I'm going to tell it. So I finally figured out a story to replace the rowers about what it should feel like to be on a team. And it comes from a Mm, hypothetical family that bears no resemblance to mine whatsoever that went camping in Orillia at Mara Provincial Park, hypothetically. And when they were driving down to the beach, this family, they heard that a huge rainstorm was coming, like big. And they thought, oh, the fly on our little tent is probably not going to cope with that amount of rain. So they had a brilliant idea, Canadian Tire. It's right up there with Tim Hortons. Um, so they drove to Canadian Tire in Aurelia. Guess what? They were not the first people to have this brilliant idea. And all that was left in the tarp section was a tarp that was just barely bigger than their tent. So they bought the tarp, and they brought it back, and they laid it out, and their job was to make the tarp as big as possible, to cover as much ground as possible, and to get it centered right over the tent. So there were four people, a mom and a dad and two daughters, again, hypothetically, and they had to spread out the tarp to cover as much ground as possible. Were they a team? Yeah, so they're a team. They have a common goal and they're interdependent. So in my books, they're a team. Were they all pulling in the same direction? No, that would not have spread out the tarp very effectively, would it? Okay, so there is a, a way that we can have a team that feel tension with one another that are not pulling in the same direction, that are in fact pulling in different directions. So it is possible. So we can have a new image in our heads. So there's two big things that can go wrong here. What if, again, speaking hypothetically, the father pulled too hard on his corner of the tarp? I can tell you what would happen. It would pull the grommet right out of the corner of the tarp and send the four-year-old flying. 
So that doesn't work. And I bet you've had people where the conflict stops being healthy, stops being productive, because one person pulls too hard on their corner. They talk too loudly, they get vicious, they get personal, or they just take up too much oxygen. Right? That doesn't work. Conflict stops being productive if one person either pulls the tarp right off of the tent, it's not even covering the tent anymore, or pulls the grommet right out of the corner, or leaves someone on their butt. But here's another thing that goes wrong. What if the nine-year-old is too cool for school and decides she's fed up and off she goes? Does that allow the tarp to cover the tent? What happens if one corner gets let go in this flourish of drama? It goes, hypothetically, it goes flying backwards and an entire part of the tent is left exposed. There's, a, there's an issue not covered. That's what happens on teams. But if we can help people to map out, and this is the work I do in the workshops, help people to understand, what corner of the tarp are you pulling on? What's your role? What are you supposed to be pulling on? I had great fun with one of the big food companies in Toronto when we were working with the operations team and said, what rope are you pulling on in this company? And they said, consistency, predictability, that's what we're here to do. And then had the exact same conversation with the sales and marketing team who said, flexibility, agility, that's what we're here to do. I said, how does it feel to work with each other? Not good. How do you feel about them? Oh, not good. Because they saw it as adversarial instead of seeing it as the only way we cover the most ground for our company is if we each understand which rope we're pulling, if we're very careful to monitor, never pulling so hard that we take the whole thing off of the target, and if we don't let people away, I don't care, you know what? Love Susan Cain, love quiet, love introverts. You still have an obligation, even if you are quiet, to pull your side of the tarp. Because if you don't, something is left exposed. So as Canadians, in organizations, in teams, we have got to get better at conflict. We've got to teach people, no, it doesn't always feel like you're pulling in the same direction. Sometimes you feel tension. You're supposed to. It's good, it's healthy. Just don't rip the grommet out. And if we can teach people this, if we can build the skills of conflict for nice people, we'll make decisions faster, we'll have higher engagement, we will actually get the productivity levels that our organizations deserve to have, given how smart our people are. So it's absolutely time that we confront the issues we have with toxic teams in our organizations, or even just mediocre teams. We can't afford them anymore. We need high performance teams. And that comes with a, a personal accountability to get a hold of the crap in our heads, deal with our baggage, right? Our assumptions, our biases, our prejudices, and to open ourselves up to contributions from other people. Start with a positive assumption. And it requires that we stop saving the nasty thoughts for while we're in the car, and we start having open, productive conflict for one another. It's time that we use that to make our organizations more effective, to make our people more engaged, and it's time that we stop passing on our misery when we walk through the door at night. So I, I hugely encourage you to think about your own opportunity to inspire your team to grow up, to get along, and ultimately, to get stuff done. Thank you, it was so nice to meet you.